What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to really dive into the subject of how do you get a crystal clear beer like this? How often have you guys made lagers that you want to be crystal clear like this beer but they always are cloudy, a little bit hazy at the end of the process and never quite truly bright? Well today we're going to dive into that subject and help you answer those questions and hopefully help you make perfectly clear beers of your own. In this video, I'm gonna talk about various ways to fight haze in your beer and to get a crystal clear beer fast every single time. But at the very end, I'll tell you exactly what my process is that's enabled me to get perfectly clear beers like this within a week. And it's not all that complicated, but it works foolproof every single time. So this here is a Czech pale lager that I brewed not too long ago. It's actually not all that old. It hasn't been lagering for a very long time, but it is indeed truly crystal clear. So how did I make that happen? In order to understand how to make beer crystal clear like this, we first have to understand, well, where does the haze come from and what even is it? So the haze itself is actually a collection of different large molecules. Things like proteins, starches, polyphenols, and yeast are all among the primary contributors to haze in a beer. If you have enough of those large molecules in one place, they're gonna to start to block out light transmission and that's how you get haze. And there's also the phenomenon of chill haze, which is actually typically just many of these different compounds bonding to each other to create larger molecules and therefore haze. You'll see this typically during a cold crash, or if you just go straight to the keg, you'll see a chill haze there sometimes. Now, if you're trying to make a crystal clear beer, typically you're gonna be able to actually achieve that relatively easily if your process is good. If you're able to fully convert your starches during the mash and you're able to break out those proteins fully during the boil, then typically it's not really gonna take all that long for your beer to start pouring clear once you put it on tap. But there's also some products we can use to help accelerate that process and to help guarantee a crystal clear beer at the end of the process every single time. Now starting with a mash, everybody knows that that's the step where enzymes uh, are able to convert the starches and grain into fermentable sugars. Everyone typically looks at the mash through the lens of, okay, what kind of body do I want? What kind of you know, residual sugar profile do I want? But it also affects clarity because if you don't fully complete your mash, you will have unconverted starches left over, which can contribute a significant amount of haze. That is a great way to get really, really full, thick haze in a beer. And the only way to really, truly ensure that you have complete conversion in your beer is to perform an iodine test on the mash. All you have to do is take a sample of your wort, add a few drops of iodine to it, and watch to see if there's any color change. If you see it change to a dark color, that means there's still starches involved in the mash that have not been completely converted yet. If you see it change to a yellow color or just no change at all, then that means your conversion's actually completed and you can carry on to your next steps of brewing. The next step of the process where you can start to fight haze is the boil. Ensure you have a good, strong hot break during your boil. The hot break or the uh, um, massive amount of foam and just stuff that comes out of the boil as soon as you hit the boil is all protein. All of that stuff is haze causing proteins that will start to precipitate out of the liquid during the boil. During the course of the boil, these will continue to precipitate a little bit, but most of it happens at the very beginning. Once you chill your beer, down, this precipitate full of proteins becomes the true. It falls down at the bottom of the kettle and coagulates there. The more of that you precipitate during the boil and the less of that you pick up transferring to your fermenter, the less haze you will have in your beer. During the boil though, there's another trick we can pull and that's using hot side findings. Something like whirl flock or Irish moss is usually the most common way to do this. Once they break down in the mash, they turn into negatively charged particles, which attract positively charged proteins and beta-glucans. This once again helps you strip these proteins and beta-glucans out of solution, helps them fall down to the bottom of the kettle, and then you don't bring them over with the rest of your wort into the fermenter. So now that you've finished your boil and you're moving to the fermenter, here is one other place that you can combat haze, and that is through using a very specific product, an enzyme known as Clarity Firm, sold by White Labs for a relatively steep price though. Clarity Firm is a very interesting thing in that it actually combats not only haze, but also gluten content of your beer. If you want the beer to actually end up being gluten reduced, not gluten free, but gluten reduced, so tolerable for mild celiac, 
Then you can use Clarity Firm to cleave the glutens and make it a little bit better off for folks who are a little bit sensitive to gluten. I still would not recommend depending on Clarity Firm alone to make a truly gluten-free beer. You need to actually have gluten-free grains in order to do that first, but that's a whole separate topic. Clarity Firm, however, also attacks chill haze, and chill haze is formed once you actually cool the beer down post-fermentation. It's a relatively expensive product, but in my experience, it's actually really effective. Um, once you add it to that fermenter, it's it's gonna just not really appear to do anything, but once you transfer the beer into a keg and you cool it down or you bottle, then you're gonna start to see the impact of it. Within 24 to 48 hours, you'll be pouring a clear beer um, without really, in most cases, the need to add any cold side findings. It's actually pretty cool. And that takes us to the next step of removing haze from your beer, and that is adding cold side findings. I'll go over my preferred method in detail at the end of this, but my preferred method always involves cold side findings. Cold side findings are either gelatin or biofine. Gelatin is an animal derived product and biofine is a vegan friendly product that is not animal derived. So if that is your thing, then go ahead and check out biofine instead of gelatin, but they work the exact same way. However, in my experience, biofine has been far easier to prepare and add to a keg, considering all you have to do is pour it in instead of preparing it in solution and heating it up like you would for gelatin. However, gelatin has honestly been the far more effective product, again, in my experience, limited scope. They both work the same way though in that they are positively charged products which attract negatively charged haze creating polyphenols, yeast, and chill haze. They are best applied in tandem with hot side findings for World Flocker Irish Moss so that you have both a positively charged particle going in at one stage of the brewing process and a negatively charged particle going in at the other stage of the brewing process, both attracting haze creating particles that then eventually drop out of solution. In any case, when you're fighting chill haze with cold side findings, the key thing, the critical thing here is to let the chill haze form in the first place. You cannot add these findings when the beer is warm. If you're moving from fermenter to keg and your beer is already cold, then you're good to add it as it goes in the keg. However, if you add it when the beer is warm, those haze forming chains have not even had a chance to form. So when you add it, it doesn't really do anything and then your beer gets cold and then chill haze forms after you've added your findings and then you can't do anything about it unless you add more findings after. So keep that in mind, your beer has to be cold before adding any of these cold side findings. There is, however, a very interesting product that can do both of those things at the same time, and that is called Super Clear. It is a two-stage finding agent. You add one stage during fermentation and one stage after fermentation. One of those particles is positively charged, one is negatively charged. In my experience, it's been marginally effective, and I kind of stopped using it because it was kind of expensive, so I just focused on using either Biofine or Gelatin in combination with Oroflock, and that's worked very well for me in the past. There are two other methods, though, that don't involve adding anything to your beer, and the first is using a filter. If you use a very fine filter, not only from the kettle to the fermenter, but from the fermenter to the keg, you are able to strip out all of that yeast, all of those hot particles, and create an exceptionally clear beer without adding anything to it. Um, this does not fight chill haze though, so just keep that in mind. However, the less particulate matter you have in your beer in general, the less likely you are to have haze at all. So it does help on that front. But the second method is lagering. Good old fashioned patience. So letting your beer set at a cold temperature for a long time and allowing everything in that beer to slowly fall out of solution and being able to then package off of that and then you have a perfectly clear beer that can't form chill haze because it already has formed chill haze. And the final thing that can help you get clear beer without really doing anything or adding anything to the beer is using a floating dip tube in the keg. This is a really easy solution to implement. All you have to do is remove your straight dip tube and put this flexible nylon hose on that has a float ball on the end of it. This only draws beer from the very top of the keg where most of the particles have already fallen down to the bottom. With a conventional straight dip tube, you have all those haze forming particles and proteins forming a sludge at the bottom of the keg. And oftentimes with that straight dip tube, you're drawing up a little bit of that sludge with each beer, and that can create some issues uh, when you're trying to look for a perfectly clear beer every time. A floating dip tube will solve that problem, however, they're not 100% perfect, and sometimes they do end up floating a little too high, and then you just draw off CO2 instead of beer. So just, your experience may vary, but it does help quite a bit in terms of ensuring your beer is clear. 
So my method for getting a crystal clear beer pretty much every single time is it's relatively simple. It's nothing new in the home brewing world. So during the boil, I'll add a Whirlflock tablet to ensure it strips out some of the proteins during the boil. Adding those hot side findings strips out the negatively charged particles. And then I'll transfer to the fermenter. Sometimes I will add Clarity Firm, but not every single time. It's sometimes just too expensive to really justify, but it is effective when it is used. However, it's very much an optional step. Once the beer is finished fermenting and I move it into my keg, I'll package everything, I'll shove it in my fermentation chamber and bring it down to 33 degrees, right above the freezing temperature of water in order to add cold side findings. Ensuring that that beer is very cold, I will add either gelatin or biofine at this time and let it strip out those positively charged haze creating particles. And lastly, I use a floating dip tube in all of my kegs in order to draw that clear beer off the very top as soon as it drops out of solution. And then I will take that beer and I'll raise it back up to the serving temperature and it is crystal clear every single time, usually within about two days of packaging the beer. I've really only had this fail with me one time and that was when I had an incomplete starch conversion in the beer because I didn't test. So I hope I've given you some techniques that are helpful to you in your creation of the perfectly clear, appealing looking lager such as this one. If that was helpful to you and if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and comment down below with your thoughts and experiences. And let me know down in the comment section, is there something I missed that you use uh, to help make your beer clearer as well? Let us all know so we can all learn a little bit from the comment section. Anyway guys, if you wanna support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt, a hoodie, anything like that from my merchandise store, which is down below the description box. Great place to go to help support the channel. I get a little bit of those profits. I also have my Patreon. I have channel memberships. I have a super thanks button as well. If you wanna check that out or helping support me directly, I really appreciate all that you do. It helps me keep this channel going and helps me upgrade my equipment and helps me do what I am doing. But I also have an Amazon store where I have a lot of the gear that I use all the time, not only for YouTube, but also for brewing. So check that out if you're curious. Also, all of the products that I mentioned in this video by name are gonna be linked in the description box with links to the product pages on Amazon if you're curious about getting them for yourself. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on not only Instagram, but also Facebook as The Apartment Brewer. So go check those links out for some more frequent content and last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. It means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it. So until the next one, may your beers forever be clear, unless you're brewing hazies. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one, so cheers.